Hello and welcome to chapter four, functions. This is uh, the fourth of our basic patterns. We'll get to iterations next. Functions is the store and reuse. One of the things in programming is that we never like to repeat ourselves. We don't like to, if we have four or five lines of code and we're gonna do the same thing later, we don't like to put the same four lines of code in. Um, even if, uh, it, it, the, it has to do with reliability. If you find something wrong with those four lines of code and you've got them uh, 12 different places in your program, um, then you've got to find all 12 places and fix them. So we're like collect those to one place and then call them and reuse them. And that's the idea of store and reuse. Um, so this is what how, how functions work inside of Python. Uh, the first thing we notice is there is a new keyword def that stands for define function. And the def is like an if statement, or we'll see fours and whiles, that they end in a colon, and then they have an indented block, and then the indented block de-indents, and that's the end of the function. And so, so there's these there's two statements make up this function. Um, the key thing that you have to understand and get used to is this is this def part is actually not running any code whatsoever. It's actually remembering the code, and that's what I call the store phase. The def creates a bit of code and records it like a macro, although it's much more complex than a macro. And it names it whatever you chose. You gave it a name. We named this one thing. And so it, as a side effect of Python reading or parsing these three lines, it doesn't do anything, but it remembers. These two lines are what you would like to run when you invoke thing. So this is the definition of a function, and this is the invoking of the function. But so let's, so this doesn't do anything. So there's no output here from that stuff right there. But then what happens is you invoke it. And this thing looks like it's part of Python, but you in effect have extended Python with your def statement. And so when th it sees thing, it goes up and runs your code. And so out comes hello fun. And then you, you co it comes back and goes to the next line, does print, so print comes out. And then it goes back and like, oh, this is the reuse part, but we get to reuse it. We define it once and we use it twice. Then it runs this code again and it goes to the next line and it's all done. So this little bit came out twice. And of course, this is really simple so that I can fit it on a page, but you get the idea that I don't want to repeat. This might be, you know, 15 to 100 lines of code and I don't want to type those over and over again. So I say, hey, store these in a name what I, that I choose and then when I invoke them, bring them back and then run them again, okay? So that's the basic idea. We actually have already been using functions from the beginning. The print is a function, right? Print is a function. Every time we see print, P-R-I-N-T parenthesis, and then we have some stuff in here, we are calling the print function. This is the syntax with two little um, parentheses is the syntax for functions. And so input's a function, type is a function, float's a function, int's a function. All these things are built-in functions that come with Python um, at the moment that we, uh, uh, we started. I mean, it's just we installed Python and these came along. And, um, and then there's other functions that we define and use, and that's what the def is for. And in effect, we can create new reserved words of our own making that extend the Python language. After, the, after we define the function. So it's just this bit of reusable code that takes some arguments. We haven't seen any with arguments. There's a little parenthesis, and we'll see how that works in a bit. We define using the def keyword, and then we invoke it. We, there's the defining phase, which actually doesn't run the code. It just remembers the code. And then there's the invoking phase. You define it once, and then invoke it one or more times. Calling the function or invoking the function, we think of those two things as the same thing, call invoke are just the terms we use. Most people just say call the function, but invoking it is a perhaps more descriptive way to think about it. So here's an example of a function. It is built into Python, it's called the max function. And we can pass some parameters into the max function. So we pass the hello world string. Now, like much of Python, max knows it's what kind of thing is being passed into it, and it knows that it's looking for the largest character, the high, the, the um, the lexographically largest character, and in this case, it scans this little, that's inside the max code, it scans through and finds the largest character. So apparently, lowercase letters are higher than uppercase letters, because in English, we get back a W. And so this is what's called the return value. So this is an assignment statement 
Let me clear this and start over. So this is an assignment statement, so it has to evaluate this right-hand side. And a function call is nothing more than like x plus 1. It's something to evaluate. It runs the function code, passes in this argument, and then this residual value, this is called the return value, we'll look at this in more detail, becomes the result of this little bit in the expression, and there's nothing else. We could have, you know, w plus 1 or something. And then the w is what's stored into big. Okay, so we print big, and big is a variable that has the, st the letter w inside of it. And then we ask, what is the smallest? And that finds the blank, and so we get a blank to see this. There's a min function and a max function. Both of these are built in. These are built-in functions. They're always there for us. Okay, so here is um, another example of the max function. And so we can think of this as invoking or calling this function as this right-hand side is being evaluated. Um, we are passing this variable in, and there's some code in here, and it's going to do some stuff, yada, 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 and then it's going to give us back a bit of stuff, and that's its return value, and then that goes up into the big, right? And so that's, that's how this works. And so this is actually built in. Built in or burnt in, I guess I can't draw. And so you can think of this as some time a long time ago when Python was being first formed, somebody wrote some code. And it's got some stuff in it. It's got a little loop that reads through all the, reads through all the letters. It has to figure out if it's a string or a list, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But this is store except you didn't do the storing because it's already built in. And then this is the reuse, store and reuse. So we build these things into Python. They're already pre-built as if before the first line of your code executes, way up here, someone put all this code in for you into Python and created a thing called max for you. Now we've been using this already, built-in functions. We've got type conversions. We've got like the float that takes a integer and returns a floating point version of that. And again, this is kind of like an expression. So it, it's like, I want to divide this by 100, but before I do that, I've got to convert it to a float. So it has to sort of do these function calls as it's evaluating the expression, okay? Sometimes, like here, we just have, we just have a, a prints out the return value. That's what this is. This is the return value. If you just type a function in a parameter, uh, it, it can be in a constant or it can be a variable, and as we'll see in a second, we'll give you many of these if you like. So you can either just run it or take the result of this. This passes an integer in, converts it to a float, and then puts the float into that. Type tells us what kind of thing that is, and you can use this inside of an expression. And so it's like, what am I going to do first? Oh, I've got to do two times this thing. Oh, wait a sec. Pause just briefly for a moment to call out to some float code pass a 3 into it, and then something comes back, the return value, the residual value comes back, and then that participates, in this case it's going to be 3.0, participates in this 2 times 3.0. Okay, and so 2 times 3.0 ends up being 6.0, etc., etc. But you can see as it, it's like, oh wait a sec, i got to figure out what this is, call the function, get the return value, and then continue processing this expression. We've also done this with string conversions, partly because, just as an example, the input always returns a string. The input function returns a string. And so, you know, here's this string. Could be coming from input, but we'll just take 1, 2, 3. We know that that's a string. It's not the number 123. And if we try to add 1 to it, we get a trace back. Cannot concatenate string and integer. Trace back. But we can convert that string to an integer. And so int can take like a floating point number or an integer um, or even a string and it says, oh, I know what I'm supposed to do with a string. I'm supposed to look at this, interpret these as numbers and, you know, multiply by 10 and figure out what the hundreds place is and all that stuff. There's a little bit of work to that and it does it, but then it gives us back an integer and we say, oh, what is that? That's now the 123, but it is a, of type int. And now we can add one to it and get 124. And as before from this example that we're kind of reusing from a previous chapter, uh, you don't want to try to convert, oops, sad face, sad face, mm, sad face. Don't want to try to convert something that doesn't have digits using int because it'll say, I don't know what to do, and then your program quits, right? You don't want your program to stop. Tracebacks 
And you can, of course, deal with that with try and accept, um, but that's like a previous lecture. Okay, so up next we're going to talk about building our own functions, not just using the predefined ones.